Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. El Mariachi Movie Thoughts. So, going by the end of this and the beginning of Desperado, I will not be spoiling Desperado here, but... I suppose his hand got better, and the dog, either he got rid of it, or it morphed into Steve Buscemi. My money's on the last one. I quite like how, you know, Domino, just in, in general, Domino's character. I've heard a bunch of people, you know, find it very funny when, when, and it is, certainly, when she slaps him for, you know, trying to kiss her hand. As, as my father once pointed out, you know, of course she has to do that because, you know, she's a good Catholic, so, you know, but she is definitely a bit, you know, on the psycho side. So, yeah, definitely a good Catholic, you know, with the whole knife bit and, you know, in the bathtub. First, just, you know, gotta love how, you know, that, that she can unlock un or unclasp, I suppose, the guitar case and open it with just her feet and her toes. That, there are, you know, there are so many guys who you know, go to fetish sites for things like that in a woman. Now, the... But yes, you know, she, and she grabs the guitar, you know, puts it in his hands, and the knife down between his legs, and, you know, play, play something. I think, does she even say, play something beautiful, or play something romantic, you know, and he just goes, and... Yeah, that... And, and afterwards, she even says, you know, do I have to put you know, a knife between your legs every time you need, you know, to be motivated or inspired or whatever. And, you know, that it's in reality a letter opener. And then she just, you know, tosses it up in the air and it lands down the bath wall, you know. It's pretty funny. And the... What's it called? The bit with, you know, how later she's like, you know, he's like, is it okay? Are you sure it's okay that I sleep in here? And she's like, as long as you stay on your side. Remember, I still have this, you know. Funny girl. I thought that, you know, in, in the commentary, Rodriguez explains that part of how he wrote this was a lot of short stories where like the he follows like the rule of three in comedy with you know this, this essentially the same thing happens three times and the third time there's a twist to it you know so moko orders a beer wanting it in a flask three times the third time he actually gets it in a flask without specifying you know each time he doesn't specify but the other two times he has to correct them, no, I want it in a flask, you know. I love the bartender, too, you know, with the, he's like, eh, well, like, actually, I don't remember which of the bartenders, but one of them, I think, drinks from the, you know, glass after, because he's like, eh, whatever. And I really like that first bartender, who also, you know, talks to the mariachi. I don't personally enjoy the joke of, you know, why would I want a mariachi when I can have an entire band joke, you know, with the... I get that it's horrible music, and he explains, like, this is what replaced mariachi music, or this is the kind of music you'd find in a bar today in Mexico. Yeah, I don't know. To me, not terribly funny. But when he then, you know, when mariachi leaves, and then Azul comes in, and the bartender is like, what is this, mariachi day? 
that is hysterical, you know, that's really, really fun. And the delivery is also really good, you know, he really hit that note because, you know, the audience is like, oh, that's something bad is going to happen. And then he provokes him and it's simultaneously really funny and increasing the tension, you know. And that, that one guy who goes off into the bathroom, you know, also just, it's, it's a very simple joke, but they do it nicely enough. And then he, you know, runs out, still with the, the toilet paper roll in his hand, he's like, oh, and, you know, runs back into the bathroom, and Moku, yeah, Azul just follows him with a shotgun or a rifle or something, you know. And that he comes back into the bar, you know, just as the bartender's, you know, dialing, and he's like, or he's just gotten done dialing, and then he, like, closes his eyes, you know, he's like, oh, I'm gonna die, you know, they, they play with that some in Desperado as well, which I like, but, you know, he just, you know, that he is evidently drinking, we realize that when we see him smack down the, the empty flask, onto the, and then, you know, ending it with, you know, Moko yelling into the phone, say something, and he's like, Moko, and you see the, all the bodies, you know, very nicely done. Now, the... I also quite like when Asul is, you know, trapped between the three men, all pointing guns at him, and, excuse me, I think he's, excuse me, I think he's credited as Bigoton, like, big guy or something. You know, the, the mustached, sunglass-wearing guy who gets the, the matches. That is also quite nice, how uh, the first two times Moko is, like, angry with him, and he uses his skin to light a match. And then the third time, it's Bigoton lighting a match on Moko's body, you know. I also just gotta love how, I think it's the first time that Moko lights the match on him, or maybe it's, whatever. He lights the match, and, you know, Bigoton's like, oh, ow, that hurt, and he walks off, and then Moko just tosses the cigarette at him with this grimace on his face, and it's just like, dude, you lit the cigarette just so you could physically hurt his cheek, and then throw the cigarette at him. You know, that, that's just, that's brilliant, you know, he didn't, yeah, anyway. Yes, the, the, the three have, you know, Asul surrounded, and Asul, you know, he just, you know, thinking quickly, ah, oh, it's my guitar. And, you know, they open it, ah, oh, if it's a guitar, you're gonna be okay. If not, we'll mess you up. And, you know, they open it, and cut, and then they're just you know, it gone. They're just, they're several feet behind him. You know, he's like, what just happened, you know, and he, I guess they were kind enough to not only close it, but, you know, reclasp it all the way, and, you know, he opens it again, and they're like, hey, what's he doing? And then Mariachi comes from behind, and he's like, no, wait, that is definitely him, because he, you know, he recognizes him, he's seen him now a couple of times, you know, seen his face, so. I do find it quite ironic there at the end when Asul is saying to Moko, you know, I just wanted my cup, but you just want to kill everybody. Yeah, dude, you've killed like six guys, and at least three of them were really not threatening you in any way. You just did that to send a message to make Moko pay up. Yeah, you too are quite willing to kill for, you know, so that was, yeah. But I do like the resolution to the whole love triangle with Domino. And I, I like how you gradually discover, you know, first it's just that Domino is calling Moko. And you're like, Oh, what's what's going on, you know, and he's the friend that she's been talking about, you know, 
the the plot thickens because you really don't know what's going on there. If why why is she calling him, and has she been lying to L? You know is uh, also because she throughout the film has an air of mystique to her. You know we never learn everything about her. So that that I think was done quite nicely, and then you learn that you know Moko was. I, I also think I think the explanations and the background for the film, or the, for the film's plot, works out quite well. I think it makes a good amount of sense, and you know the. Yeah, I I didn't really find that there was anything that. You know didn't work and I liked the way it was revealed you know I like that we only near the end find out exactly what the relationship between Moko and Domino is and you know the phone call where she directly lies to Moko and he afterwards realizes you know when when she's asking him to release L that you know he he real he realizes you were with him and you know, and also just the emotion there, and you know, he works up. He gets like all red in his face from the the yelling and just the energy he puts into his performance. That's great, and just the the laughing when he shot L's hand, and that messed it up. You know, there's this one shot where like you know the the hand is all coming apart, you know, because it was it was shot like here, and it's just gone all the way down, it's falling apart. That was really nasty, and I think it was intentional that he kept that shot in there, you know. But yeah, and he's just standing there laughing at his own joke. Hate when people do that, you know, I, I'd have shot him for that too. And he's like, you know, get out of here and bring your hand with you, and laughing and looking at the other guys, you know, looking at his goons, and L grabs Asul's pistol, you know, nice continuity because, you know, the, obviously the pistols, you know, Asul's just, you know, letting his guns lay anywhere, you know, he, he leaves his guitar case behind several times with, you know, the bartender, if he had, you know, stones, he could have gone over, grabbed a gun and been ready for Asul when he came back out, but anyway, you know, Asul didn't know that the guy was stoneless, so anyway, not for sure. Anyway, now the, but but yes, the, that last scene, you know, he grabs Asul's gun, gets back up, shoots Moko, and you know, it's just this great because it's very, you know, I don't know who has the last laugh kind of thing. Very, yeah, and and he. Yeah, I, I quite like the scene, I, and I just, I like the, the entire resolution of that, that it suddenly, you know, I don't think when the movie starts you, you're necessarily sure that Domino is going to end up dead, or that Mariachi's story will necessarily end in complete tragedy. I think some of the scenes between the two of them, you do kind of feel like this might work out, you know, the it will get solved, you know, without too much bloodshed, but, you know, and, and you, and at the same time, you have this sort of hinting at it in the dream sequences, which, you know, going by Rodriguez himself were apparently just to, you know, jack up the running time to that, but I, I even if they were not intended to mean anything, I like them and I think that they at least work as setting up that there will be tragedy, you know. And just, yeah, it's it's a nicely downer ending, you know. It, it could easily have been silly. The dude has a mechanical hand all of a sudden. You know, he's got like, and, and it's got like the three fingers like he's a ninja turtle or something, but no, it's... It, it really works, you know, you you feel for him, that, that thing about I will never play the guitar again, you know, and you've seen over the course of the film, you know, you have the scene of, you know, it's maybe not the most compelling scene, but when he plays the guitar 
for the entire crowd, you know, it's nice music, and they are loving it. I, mean, I think they went a little over the top. They're like whooping and you're just loving it. I think it's that kind of, you know, that's what you get from extras that are just literally off the street. You know, they don't actually know how to act. But yeah, you know, he can be a really good guitar player, and he can receive accolades, I think that's the word. You know, it just... So yeah, you know, he, he lost his... He lost the love of his life. He lost the... You know, the... Guitar playing ability. He lost his dream. He lost his, you know... Livelihood, you know, and he just goes off with the guitar case full of guns. Now... The knife thing that he puts, was that the letter opener? You know, when, when he gets on the motorcycle, he like puts a... Why would he keep a letter opener there if, if it really was just a letter opener? Anyway, I love how the dog looks as just non-threatening as dogly possible whenever you cut to it, you know, whenever they cut to it, whenever he cuts to it, you know, and that the, uh, what's it called? Anyway. Yeah, I think that might more or less cover it. I think it does a good job of setting up, even when Rodriguez didn't necessarily think much of it or something. You know, I like that the well, like you know, like the dream sequences. But I like that you see the vase that looks like a cat pretty early on when he's up there in Domino's you know, room, and he's just looking at it and it's just drawing attention to it. You know, the the visual drawing. Visually, Rodriguez draws attention to it. Excuse me. And then later, you see her getting the keys out of it, and she says, you know, oh, I'll, you know, when he has wooed me enough, I, I am to drive this motorcycle up to his ranch. So then later, when, she's, when he finds out from the bartender she's at the ranch, he runs up, gets the keys, and drives on the motorcycle, you know. Now... I think that might be more or less it. I, I really like the entire opening. I think he did great on that, and I think it's actually one of the best sequences of the film. Just the entire establishing of this prison, sort of out in the middle of nowhere. It's extremely quiet, you know, and just... It's no trouble getting past this female guard, you know. Just drop some cash on the counter, and she won't even make a sound, you know. She just does not care. And I like that it does not start in a conversation. It does very much, you know, at first the only person, you know, talking at all is Asul. You know, and I like that you don't realize from the start, which is also, you know, I didn't want to give this away in the review itself, but those people in the cells around him and with him basically his guards, you know, I mean, I mean, sure, you know, Moko says over the phone, a few loyal men, you still don't know at that point that they have guns, that they're armed inside the prison, you know, so it's basically, it's almost a win-win situation, you know, like Moko says, the protection of the walls of the prison, as well as guns, it is, you know, well, he doesn't know about the guns, but yeah, you know, it's a sort of great situation, and you really don't see that coming. You just see these guys with guns. And, again, a nice editing trick. Over that, you hear Moko saying over the phone, I'm sending some guys over. And when you see these guys with guns, you just immediately know it's a double cross. And that whole thing, it just... That was really well done, I think. I think, actually, he's... Some of what he does best are opening sequences, you know, openings and endings are some of where he, you know, I, I don't know if that's like, I, well, the opening to a film is obviously the first impression you get of the film, and 
if you know how to do that, you can really make something like that work. You know, it's it's when his films, it's when you watch his films as a whole that, well, he's made a few that are thoroughly good, but it tends to be when he doesn't write them, you know. But, you know, and yeah, and with the ending, if you, you know, that's also something where if you really know how to make an ending work, even though it might be on slightly shaky foundation, be that being the rest of the film, it can still really have an impact, you know. Yeah, I believe that's everything I want to say about the film. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.